Road trips. Barbecues. Vacations. Baseball. Festivals. Bourbon. Oh yeah. 10 bottles we will be enjoying in the heat of summer. Or right now, I am hot. Shout out to our newest patron, Robert Peth. Thanks for joining the Artfully Bourbon Patreon community. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the studio. My name's Arthur. And I'm Scott, and you're watching Artfully Bourbon. Welcome, welcome. Grab a glass and some ice and join us. Cheers to summer. Cheers. Typically, a lot of people consider bourbon season one that's a little cooler. Sure. Bourbon, it's great for warming up, but bourbon can also be enjoyed every season. Our bourbon of choice definitely changes from season to season. And summer is a time to enjoy bourbon a little differently, on a rock or in a cocktail. Something cool and refreshing. Today, we share 10 bottles of bourbon we enjoy cold. I love summer. What makes for a good summer bourbon? A few things we consider. First, the taste. We typically go for something more fruity or even tropical in flavor. Mm -hmm. You know, those flavors of summer. Treat those taste buds. Second, we consider proof. The higher proof maintains its flavor better in cocktails. Lower proofs in cocktails aren't so great in our opinion, but works better on ice. Depending on your occasion, both high and low proof could be good options with a little ice. Yeah, you gotta stay hydrated when it's hot out there. All right, lastly, we consider the price. Is it a day at the beach or a dinner party with friends? Bourbon and price matter. Mm -hmm. And today we share a range of options in flavor, proof, and price. We aren't making cocktails today, but before we get into the whiskey, let's talk ice. The second most important ingredient in a summer bourbon drink. So ice can vary and it's important for creating the drink you're expecting. First up, crushed ice. Using crushed ice will make your drink the coldest and it has the most surface area to cool down your bourbon. It can also water down your bourbon the most. Think, I don't know, mint julep. So use a lot of it so your drink doesn't turn into water. If you don't have crushed ice available, it's fairly easy to make. Pour cubes of ice into a Ziploc and grab your favorite mallet. I got this. No, 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 this. Good idea. <laughs> Next up, the underrated ice cube. The easiest of all ice options. Grab what you have and toss it into a glass. Done. Ice cubes won't melt as fast as crushed ice, but they will melt faster than the next option. Introducing The Rock. Wait, The Rock is here? No, he had to back out the last minute, but we do have this one. The best option for keeping your drink cool, but not watering it down too fast. There's a whole art to creating beautiful, clear ice rocks, but that's another episode. Or another channel. Yeah. Grab a mold and freeze some water. When frozen, put it in your glass and cover it in bourbon. Okay, don't tell me twice. <laughs> Cheers. We love these Joy Jolt fluted whiskey glasses, especially in the summer with ice. If you'd like a set to enjoy your bourbon, there is an affiliate link in the description below. Okay, let's get into the bourbon. You know what goes well with bourbon? Ice? How about some smoked wings? Mm. Maybe with some hot sauce? No, 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 no. Just some bourbon. I have a challenge for you. Give us a bottle that goes well with wings. Go. I got it. Bottle number one, Four Roses Small Batch Select. I gotta try this wing. Couple of American classics here. Oh my goodness. These are really good. Bourbon goes well with many different kinds of meats, but we like Four Roses specifically with smoke style meats. Mm -hmm. 
The smoke flavor of apple, cherry, or hickory wood complements the fruit and peppery flavor of this bourbon. Yeah, they pair really nicely. This is 104 proof and it's great over ice or in a cocktail, like an old fashioned. Another bourbon I enjoy over ice is bottle number two, Buffalo Trace. It's a little overrated, isn't it? I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> if this is not marked up, it's a great value for summer drinking. I agree, I agree. I'm just giving you a hard time. If you're going to the beach, this is a good one to toss in the bag. It's an inexpensive bottle and great for an afternoon in the sun. Buffalo Trace is a lower proof with a soft summery flavor profile. It's just 90 proof, but quite fruity and refreshing. The next one, bottle number three, is equally refreshing and easy to drink, but it's not from Kentucky. This is the Redwood Empire Pipe Dream. Named after the 14th largest tree in the world. And you guessed it, this comes from one of our favorite distilleries outside of Kentucky. Mm -hmm. A blend of four to 14 year old barrels from California. It's on this list as an alternative to the Buffalo Trace. But similar to the Buffalo Trace in that we recommend only over ice. It's not enough proof for a cocktail in our opinion. This is a great whiskey for camping trip. It has less fruit than the Buffalo Trace. A really nice nutty flavor mixed with just a little bit of vanilla. And it's more woody, if that's your thing. Buy one of these for just $35 and guess what? Redwood Empire is going to plant a tree to keep the forest alive and well. I like trees. I like camping and bourbon. But let's get into bottle number four. Bottle number four comes from a brand we just discovered last year. In a bottle we cannot put down. Still Austin Bourbon and its big brother, the Higher Proof Cast Strength. Bonus bottle, eh? Yep, and these are so good. I had to include both. Made for the oddballs and dreamers. The musician is, as the distillery says, music in a bottle. Really? What does that mean? It means you can taste the music. That music is all the grain that comes from Texas. Yeah. What is your favorite musician from Texas besides this bottle? I love me some George Strait, Waylon Jennings, but I'm gonna go with the one and only Stevie Ray Vaughan. That's a good one. My favorite has to be Whiskey Myers. Because of their name, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, I really like their honest laid back style. Reminds me of Texas, summer, and a little icy bourbon. Do you have a favorite Texas musician? Let us know what your favorite is in the comments. Okay, you wanna get back to bourbon here? Okay, the real reason these are on the list is because of the taste. They have a flavor that is uniquely still Austin, and it's not your typical Texas whiskey. It's better. I love the citrus and tropical flavors that I get in these. The aroma and taste are similar to each other and are both very complex. Cherries, vanilla, and a little bit of coffee. Yeah, and after the fruit, bourbon turns into an earthy mocha and clove. So this is great for summer because it's got a little heat and it comes in at 98.4 proof. But it acts like it's 110. It's great neat if you like a little extra heat, but it's perfect over ice. You could fool me with the age of this bourbon. It's only a couple of years old, but it tastes like it could be like mm -hmm. six to seven. The acoustic version of these two is the standard at $45. But if you're looking to kick things up a notch, grab the regular cast strength for $60. This is the day sipper, and the cast strength is the one you enjoy under the stars. It's only a couple years old, but the cast strength is 118 proof and accentuates the flavor beautifully. Gets a little more intense and changes flavors a little bit more. It's a little more nutty and earthy, losing some of the heavy citrus fruit from the original. Mm -hmm. And overall, if you have access to these in your area, we recommend the great value. Okay, on to the next one. The next one takes us from the heat of Texas to the coastline. This is the Barrel Seagrass.
If you thought the Still Austin was tropical, you haven't tried anything yet. This American and Canadian rye blend exudes juicy tropical and orchard fruits. Some pear, grapefruit, melon, apricot, and some traditional notes. Mm -hmm. It finished with some seaside breezy florals and a little grass. So what makes this unique is the blend of rye, but also the finishing. This might just be the best finished whiskey we have ever had. Do you agree? Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. Yeah. And Barrel Craft Spirits contributes a portion of the proceeds from the sale of Barrel Seagrass to the Ocean Foundation to contribute to the conservation and restoration of seagrass. It's finished in Martinique rum and Madeira and apricot brandy barrels. And it is not shy on the proof. 118.2 proof. So if you're looking for something to sip on the porch next to the seaside or just on your back porch, anywhere, this is it. You know where I'm gonna be after this episode. Well, before you go to your porch and before we share the next bottle, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you like bourbon on porches in the summer, hit that like button. Okay, next up is the Jefferson's Tropics clocking in at $100. We know the name says summer. It says hot and sweaty. So Jefferson's is known for their experimentation. Some of their bourbons seem a little gimmicky, if you ask me. Yeah, and this one definitely fits that bill, but it's actually pretty good too. The tropics are created from Kentucky bourbon barrels that are put on a container ship and sent all the way to the humidity of Singapore for an additional 18 months of aging. They are shipped back and ta-da, you have a great tasting bourbon. We can't knock them for trying some crazy shit. This experiment actually worked. The aroma is pretty traditional to start. Then it turns savory and really fruit filled. Mm -hmm. And once you get into the sip, it's more fruit with baking spices. Caramel is dripping over the top of that. Mm. It's creamy and has a rich, complex mouthfeel. The finish is more of the baking spices combo with a little more earthy flavor. It's a little sweet and a little spicy, but overall, it's just really inviting. Mm -hmm. We enjoy this neat, but it's also really nice chilled with a large rug. It might be in a premium category, but totally worth it. If you are looking for more value, you can't really go wrong with the next bottle on this list. The Bardstown Origin Series. If you have watched our channel in the past, you know we are big fans of Bardstown Bourbon Company. This is no longer sourced or blended for that matter. Their own high rye mash bill, and it's amazing. That mash bill is 60% corn, 36% rye, and just 4% malted barley. And it's aged for six years in Bardstown, Kentucky. The mash bill and aging give it just a fantastic profile. As you begin, you might find oranges, some mint, mixing with a rich caramel and a touch of oak. And the palate is more of that with some cinnamon, vanilla. Yeah, it comes in at 96 proof and is just right. Enjoy this one neat or on ice, but this is one we'd also recommend in a cocktail. Really, any way you like bourbon. Pick up a bottle for $45. And Bardstown Bourbon Company, if you're watching, can we please get distribution in Missouri, please? All right, the next bottle might be underrated. Well, maybe we should just keep it a secret. Mm, yeah, probably should. Skip bottle number eight. Okay, bottle number nine. No, 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 we gotta share it with our friends. You sure? Yes. The bottle label doesn't look like anything special, but it is. The George Dickel Bottled and Bond. And Whiskey Advocates 2019 Whiskey of the Year. That year was the first year it came out. And it's only gotten better since then. And it's proof you don't need to spend a lot of money for an amazing higher age bourbon. A 13 year old bourbon for only $45. You serious? <laughs> Do you say those numbers right? Yep. 13 years for $45. Yes. Hence why this is underrated. Well, one reason. Well, yeah, it also tastes amazing. Mm -hmm. I love the complexity in this. 
so many flavors. It leans a little sweeter, especially compared to the last couple we've shared. Like a burnt frosted cake. Mm -hmm. Fruit, syrup, cinnamon, little mint. And since this is a little more corn heavy in the mash bill, you will get a little of that on the taste as well. Speaking of mash bills, this could actually be considered a corn whiskey. 84% corn, 8% rye, and 8% malted barley. Mm. There's a lot of love for Kentucky bourbon out there, but don't forget about the great taste of Tennessee. So all these on the list are great, but sometimes you just need a little extra proof. Especially when you're adding the ice. One of our favorites with a little extra proof is the Larceny Barrel Proof. Typically, these will range from 120 to 130 proof and are distributed three times a year. They all vary in flavor, so for today's episode, we aren't recommending just one. Look for different batches and see what you like. The Larceny is a weeded bourbon from Heaven Hill and is typically aged six to eight years. Ugh, I want 13. I typically go for a little more rye, but this is one of my favorite weeders. It's nutty with a charred or burnt caramel and some wood. Some spices, some chocolate. Just perfect for a summer night under the stars by a campfire. Mm. We usually see these around for $65 to $75, but sometimes they leave the shelves pretty fast, especially if it's one of the better batches. If you see this one this summer, grab it. And enjoy it neat or over ice. The last on our list of summer bourbons is one from the mother of bourbon. Mother? Elijah Craig is known as the father of bourbon. Is this from his wife, Mrs. Craig? Not exactly. Scandalous. Mother and father have no connection. This is from Mary Dowling, a tequila barrel finished high rye bourbon. Yeah. You're probably wondering about tequila bourbon. Mary though has an interesting story with historical significance. Yeah, so Mary Dowling was a successful distiller in Kentucky, but when prohibition began, she wouldn't stop at nothing. So Mary decided to move operations all the way down to Juarez, Mexico. So she started making tequila? No, she still made what we know today as bourbon, but before it was ruled to only be an American spirit. To commemorate the Mexican bourbon connection, the distillery owners Cava Zamanian from Rabbit Hole and Bernard Ricard decided to finish Kentucky bourbon in Mexican tequila cask. I don't know of many tequila barrel finished bourbons, so prepare yourself for a unique experience. It's not just tequila though. Before the barrels used in this finish were tequila barrels, they were also used as wine barrels. And bourbon too. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting story in the experimental taste follow suit. If you'd like to see a full in-depth review before purchasing, we're gonna do a review on Patreon coming soon. Bourbon, whiskey, and tequila reviews. No tequila reviews. Okay. Community chats and more for as little as $1.99 a month. Link in the description below. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to hit that like button. And smash that subscribe button so you don't miss future Artfully Bourbon episodes. All right. Thanks for watching. I'm going to the porch. Until next time, I'm going with you. Enjoy responsibly. Peace. Peace.